Um, there, we'll do that. Uh, so the last thing I wanted to tell you about was my reading of the Fifth Spirit Tarot Guidebook. Um, and Laura mentioned in her recent uh, review of her August activities that we did a buddy read on this together. Um, and it was great. It was great to do a buddy read. I don't usually read tarot guidebooks because they frustrate me and I find them to be kind of insipid and not very educational. Um, so it was nice to have a reason, you know, an accountability buddy to actually just sit down, give it a chance and read through it. Um, and I liked it. I have to say, um, I would say, you know, in terms of the tarot meanings that are given and all of that, um, a lot of them are sort of the same rehash of Eden Gray that a lot of tarot guidebooks give. And I don't even think they're aware that that's what they're rehashing. Uh, I do want to talk in a longer video about Eden Gray and her, who she was and her influence on sort of how we read tarot in a post, a post new age way. Um, but as Laura mentioned, the reframing culturally of the tarot and trying to make it more accessible to people, I really valued in this book. Um, so I think it is worth reading and I agree. I hope that when Hay House um, take the fifth spirit to, um, to mass market that they will include I think I think they're one of the publishers that includes like a larger box and then usually a thicker guidebook and I hope they'll republish this book um, as is because it it has a lot of value um, I would say my main critique of this so uh, Charlie Claire Burgess the author of this book does tell you why they chose certain symbols for each card What's odd to me is that their reasoning doesn't match up with my first impression of why those symbols would be on those cards. So that's that's interesting that like I can I can enjoy the symbolism, but not agree with the reasoning. Um, it's it's just funny. You would think that you would probably agree with the reasons uh, if you liked the symbols, but. Um, but otherwise it was good and you know they do rely on numerology and they uh they talk about um dissociating gender roles from tarot card titles which i think is important you know we can all embody all of the cards in different situations so we shouldn't feel like they're talking about one specific type of person or one specific type of identity um and I thought it was clear. I definitely think that you could learn tarot from this book and be off to a pretty good start. Um, Laura's asking like the wasps and the five of wands. Uh, yeah, that's one example of like, I see the five of wands as like uncoordinated effort or trying to um, maybe practice, like trying to work together, but not quite getting it right. And in some ways, uh, Charlie's descriptions of that line up with that. But then there's other choices um, in the symbolism that are that are a little bit different. So, um, what was I saying? Yeah, good intro book. Good, good kind of beginner's book. Um, even though this is a pip deck, and I'm sorry, I don't actually have the deck in front of me, but you can see, uh, like on the five and six of cups here, you just have objects. So there, there's sort of a scene, but there's no people in the in the numbered cards. So um, it is a pip deck, but I think it would be fine to with this book um, to be a learner's deck as well. Um, and then the court cards, I think, are the highlight, both of the deck itself and of this book and the way it's written, because the court cards really give you clear examples of how those court card energies manifest as like roles in society or roles in a given situation or the kind of energy that somebody might be bringing into a situation. Um, and I think that's very clear. I think a lot of people stumble on the court cards. Um, and, and this is a great, uh, a great outline of how those court cards can work. Um, the other thing I really like is there's lots of spreads in here. So there's a three card, a four card. There's a special fifth spirit spread, which is very large, but um, encompasses a lot of different uh, aspects to a reading. And then there's 12 zodiac spreads, so based on specific cards that are aligned with zodiological information. Um, I don't like to equate uh, astrological information with the tarot. I think it's actually a poor fit. 
um, but I do like these spreads that are based on astrological attributes. So um, that's been fun. And uh, and Laura and I did some readings together. We read for each other using some of the spreads and they were, they were great. They read really, they, you know, the deck reads really well and the spreads are very clear. So if you align the spread with your question, um, it, it gives a really good reading. So, and as Laura said, there's a librarian in the deck and there's also a pit bull in this deck. So two reasons I love it. <laughs> Um, but it's good, and you can still find copies. There are a few resellers that may have copies um, of the original deck, so you can just search online for it. Um, but if you can't find it, or if it, you know, indie price is not something you want to pay, this is going to be coming out from Hay House uh, soon. Kristen asked if I'm a librarian. Yes, I am. Um, so, and I love, I love being a librarian. I love my job. I like my work a lot. So, and in the deck, the uh, librarian is the Hierophant card. So um, I just, I think that's great. You know, it's like accessing information, uh, leading you to the information that you need. That's, that's exactly what we're here for. Um, so yeah, that was the, the Fifth Spirit deck and book review. 